Welcome to Larry King Live. Our first guest tonight is an old friend. We know each other 25 years from back in the days in Miami Beach when Don Rickles was struggling in a nightclub called Murray Franklin's, left to go to a place called Los Angeles and became a major star overnight and has been ever since one of the top nightclub acts in the world and also one of the highest paid. He's with us at our studios in Los Angeles. Don Rickles, it's... Don, you look so serious. What, what is this? How? Because I can't believe I'm on such a stiff show. Listen, <laughs> Larry, you said I was successful. I tell you the truth, Larry. You weren't exactly skyrocketing to fame at that time. You were on a barge That's about right, 30 I'm... miles out in the middle of the water saying, come on the show and we'll talk. But it's good to see you again. Good seeing you, Don. Do you like the California life? Of course, my hunting dogs, we have a big estate. The <laughs> wife keeps running on the ground saying, we're rich, we're rich. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful life. It was better than Miami in two rooms with my mother, rest her soul, lifting up the curtain and saying, do you have a girl in there? <laughs> no, it's a great life. You ought to come out here, Larry, as soon as you can chip in and get a jacket. <laughs> you know, I don't know where I'm looking. I'm talking to a blank screen. You're over there. I don't know where I'm talking to. I feel like I'm Char uh, Ray Charles without my organ. <laughs> What do you think of our studios in Los Angeles? I think they're cheap and they should be painted. <laughs> Bad area, really. Well, I, I walked into the office, there's one big drape and a hundred people sitting at a desk going, uh, uh, they're all days. These people are days. Larry, do yourself a favor, walk away from this, you don't need it. Nobody gets CNN in California. A, a, a little German guy in the cellar is still trying to read Hitler. He's going, I think I got Larry King. It's a little, little cellar. Don, you're Bad getting, move. am I right, are you getting gray? Yes, Larry, I'm getting older, <laughs> doing shows like this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, by the way, folks, if you're watching and would like to talk to Don Rickles, if you want to put yourself to that, it's area code 202-342-6900. That's 202-342-6900. Cheer up, Larry. Don't be depressed. I can't stand it when you're depressed. <laughs> now, for the benefit of the audience, Don and I have been together often on microphones, and it is very difficult uh, because he does make me laugh with hello. What about... <laughs> Thanks for apologizing to the crowd for my humor, Larry. All right. Certainly, always a big booster. Always been a big booster, Larry. <laughs> I hope you go out in the street tonight in Washington <laughs> and fall on your dicky bird. You know that. Don, the, uh, with the closing of... With, with Miami Beach isn't a nightclub center anymore. New York, the places to work are limited. Has that had an effect on you? Well, no, Larry, I've been very fortunate because the gambling towns have been terrific to me. Atlantic City, uh, the Hara Organization in Northern Nevada, the Sahara in Las Vegas. Uh, all the gambling cities have been a marvelous uh, way for, for me to go. And, and I like to think I'm in the way of uh, the saloon guy, uh, the Joey Lewis days when uh, the entertainer had a lasting power. And I've uh, had a great uh, uh, ability to, be, to have a staying power in these wonderful cities. And I'm I'm very happy with the tour of working in the, the gambling towns. They've been good to me. You're also a terrific actor, a terrific serious actor. You did a Hennessy once that I think was one of the great half hours of television ever done. Why haven't you done more with that? It was too powerful for the network, too powerful. <laughs> the talent was so exciting, they, people grabbed their chest. They couldn't believe it. I've done some movies. I worked with Clint Eastwood for a picture, if you remember, many years ago called Kelly's Heroes, and I since remember. then he's talking louder. Uh, I, I did the picture in Yugoslavia. Have you been there? Early 1904. And I was there with Clint Eastwood, and he talks, as you know, with that low voice, and the whole picture, everybody thought I was a mute, because I kept going, huh? Because he keeps saying, where's the guns? You didn't see the guns, where's the guns? So I had a lot of fun, and then I worked with Tony Curtis, uh, Jamie Lee's dad, uh, who's, she's on the show tonight. I, I happened to see her in the lobby with a Halloween mask. But uh, I, I happen to... Uh, enjoy film and television, and they make jokes that I had many opportunities on television, which I did, but unfortunately the ratings were, were not that great because I only had a limited audience called America. But and, what, I, uh, what, I, what I don't understand, do you think, Don, is the fact that anybody who has seen you work in a nightclub knows, I mean, you are one of the great, great nightclub comedians of all time. Do you think television, <laughs> do you think television limits you, the fact that it's this little box? I don't know, you know, when you're an in-person performer, you have to capture what, what I do. Uh, that goes with pretty much with uh, most people, but when you're unique, as I like to think I am, and I know I am, uh, the secret has never been able to, uh, the expression is harnessed, yeah. that I can do what I do and put on that box so that comes across what Don Rickles is really all about. Uh, I, I believed in C.P.O. Sharkey, a show he had on. I, th I thought that was very funny. Uh, 
unfortunately, the rating system uh, plays the, it's, it's the, you know, you live and die by it. So uh, not to uh, do bad news, but it just didn't, didn't make it, so to speak. And ever since then, I've, I've heard a few people who are with the networks. What about the show you did with Steve Lawrence, The Blooper Show? Well, that, that was a lot of fun. I felt like Walter Cronkite with a bad headache. <laughs> uh, <laughs> originally, we were going to do jokes, but uh, ABC decided to get serious and go in the dumper. So all we did, we were a master of telling a story about tapes, which isn't exactly what I like to do. And the idea originally was we were going to have fun with it, but <laughs> the powers that be at ABC, and ABC is a wonderful network, as you know, they had a storm yesterday and the show went off. <laughs> but no problem. I'll probably never be on that network. What do you, what do you think of, of television network executives in general? I mean, what are they like? Because you've had a lot of experiences with them. Well, I can only say a dear friend of mine, Bob Wood, who was a former executive of CBS, was a marvelous gentleman. There's Brandon Tucker. There's, there's many guys up there that really know what it's all about. A lot of them run scared because, uh, hey, they got people to answer to. So these guys are under the gun, in all sincerity. They really are. And every day is another challenge for them. And they take guesses just like all of us. And if it comes out right, they're, they're heroes. And if it goes wrong, they, <laughs> they're in a deli in Israel someplace. <laughs> now, your good friend Bob Newhart, on the other hand, has Who? been very Newhart, your good friend. I don't, I don't, I don't recall the name. <laughs> <laughs> he has been very successful. Is that yes? Part, well, part? well, Bob is Bob is a reactor, and Bob yeah. is middle class America. I mean, if you ever spent an evening with Bob, you can watch a fly die on his lip. <laughs> uh, Bob is uh, <laughs> Bob on New Year's Eve. His idea of having a good time is watching his horn bend. Uh, we, <laughs> we America loves Bob. I personally, you know, do all kinds of things to keep it going, like running my car over his legs just to keep him awake. But he's a great reactor, and the public loves him, and I love him. I really do, because I know if I go busted, he'll take care of me. <laughs> he's got that kind of mind. Real Midwest guy, you know, Wonder Bread with a bologna sandwich. You married late in life. It's been successful, though, right? Yeah, well, have you seen her? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> now she's great. A, a trolley caught her on an angle. It, it, no matter, though. <laughs> Little Jewish girl from Philadelphia, what did she know? She was standing on Spruce and Market, and she went, Sailor! And uh, like a jerk, I walked over, and we've been together ever since. It is a happy marriage, though, isn't it? Uh, she's a darling lady. I've been blessed. You know, I think, uh, are you married, Larry? No. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> don't get married, Larry. I, mean, I, I, I can't picture you making love. The glasses probably will fog up. <laughs> Uh, Larry, I uh, find that uh, uh, my wife, uh, I got married, I was 38 years old. That's right. I got, well, I was alone a lot in my room. But uh, I must say that uh, she's been a great influence on my life, and uh, she's made it all happen for me with my own soul. She's given me peace of mind and great direction, and I, uh, I think the world of her. What I like to do often with Don Rickles uh, when he has been a guest is to just uh, throw out names and have Don react to them as he feels it. Ready, Don? Unrehearsed. Sinatra, at 70 years old. Some people go to temple, some people go to church. I go to him. <laughs> Ted Turner. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're laughing and you blew your job. <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Uh, fine with a box of chocolates. <laughs> Bob Hope. <laughs> I want to tell you folks. <laughs> that's right, that's what he does. All the <laughs> I know that, Larry. <laughs> no, I don't you don't have, have to remind me what he does. I have a set at home, too. As a matter of <laughs> fact, I'm going to be on his show, and I'll tell him that you know him and you've heard of him. <laughs> Johnny Carson. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> George Bush. George Bush. <laughs> Get him a tractor and a good farm. <laughs> Gorbachev. Larry, why don't I go to Washington and you sit here and I'll laugh. <laughs> I, 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 I have a tough time. Yeah, as you know, Don, you've always... Well, of course. I, now you're doing Jolson. You... <laughs> no, you have... Don Rickles has just always made me laugh from the day... Uh, you, well, we had Company's good restaurant. He used to dress as a busboy and come in. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. And insult people. But one other thing, and then we'll break and take calls, and I'll get out of this and let the public get this from you. Sure. They'll all have rifles and try to shoot <laughs> through the phone. <laughs> Why? How did the insult thing start? Well, 
to make it, to condense it, to be very honest, the insult thing started out of lack of having an act. Uh, many, <laughs> many years ago, I stood on the stage and told bad jokes and did Sophie Tucker as an impersonation. And nobody looked up. And suddenly I leaned down and said, sir, I'm getting fed up with you. Either you watch or I'm going to suck your neck, or words to that effect. And suddenly people started to laugh. And believe it or not, I had great success in your city, Washington, on 14th Street, in a place called the Wayne Room. And it was featured about uh, 12 exotic dancers in those days. They were called striptease artists. And about eight comedians. And we all stood on the stage and took turns. And I used to do jokes about all the politicians and everybody. Not jokes, but make fun of everybody. And it seemed to catch on. And it went from there. Now I'm a very big star. And I came on this show as a mercy favor. <laughs> Don Rickles will next be at the Sahara in Las Vegas, where he always works and has for 20 years. It's reported that he earns $200,000 a week. By the way, is that true, Don? <laughs> it's none of your business, Larry. Okay. Really? I don't <laughs> want to go into it, Larry. You All probably right. have three G-men there and seven government guys okay. staring at me. All right. We'll see you. When will you next be in Atlantic City? I'll be in Atlantic City offhand. I don't I think sometime in March. But uh, it's a bus ride for you, so don't worry about it. You, I'll chip in. We'll get you there. <laughs> okay. With Don Rickles, we start the phone call. Salem, Oregon. Hello. Yes, Mr. Rickles, I was wondering, what was the biggest influence that drew you into show business? Well, uh, my biggest influence, to be very honest, was... Uh, why, to be very honest, why would I lie? Uh, to be, uh, <laughs> be very honest. Uh, Milton Berle. <clears throat> Milton Berle, years ago when I started in the days of Florida and way back in my very, very beginnings. Milton Berle was always my, my uh, idol, my uh, guy that I thought represented what comedy was all about. What was it like when you first met Milton? Was it all you thought? Well, it was always, always a whisper. If you know Milton, Milton's a teacher. And you say, hi, Milton. He goes, shh, just listen. Why don't you listen? <laughs> I said, Milton, uh, I don't feel good. Shh, let me just talk to you. I'm going to listen. I'm going to walk away. Every time I'm with him, I think I'm a Yugoslavian partisan up in the mountains in a cave. <laughs> man constantly is whispering, but he's a dear soul. He's a great man. Kankakee, Illinois, for Don Rickles. Hello. One of my favorite place. Hi, Mr. Rickles. I, uh, I'd like to know if you've ever been confronted with somebody who's been pretty upset with you and uh, you kind of felt threatened. And how did you handle the situation if it ever happened? It was my mother, and I took away some of her allowance. <laughs> No, I, I tell you, in, over my years, sure, I'm sure in my beginnings there were guys that, and ladies that came into a club and weren't particularly rooting for me all the way and were a little upset with me. But I never had an incident which you would call bad news. I mean, uh, and if I did, I uh, was a great track star and had a good bike. <laughs> so I always kept on the move. Actually, now when we go to see Don Rickles, we know what to expect. I mean, we, you can't go to Don Rickles and say, I'm going to be offended by seeing you, the show. You can, but I have a few captains in the audience that could hurt you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> From the Copacabana days, they're left over. They go, sit down, he'll do the jokes. <laughs> Malibu, California. Hello. Uh, hello, Don. Uh, I'm a fan of yours. And uh, my you. father happened to be John Biner. Oh, and, your dad uh, is the best. He really is. All right, thank you very much. And I was wondering, whatever happened to that cigarette box in the Tonight Show? Did you ever get it fixed or whatever? What happened? Yes, I, in fact, I bought a brand new one and gave it to Johnny, and I still haven't gotten a thank you note, but I'm getting over it. No, oh, he was very I'll nice. i for him anyway. Bye-bye. Yeah, give my best to your dad. What do you think of John Biner? Oh, I think he's marvelous. I, I watch mm -hmm. Bizarre, and I, I just fall down. Uh, John was on the show with me many years ago when I had the Don Rickles show, and he, he, just by walking out, like you say, Larry, certain guys, you know, there, there's a style about them. Uh, Don Adams uh, also is another kind of one of those guys. They say hi, and they make you laugh, and uh, Biner is one of those kind of guys. Isn't there a classic outtake, you and Adams, unable to finish a scene? Oh, you saw that. Yeah, yeah oh, that's that was, one of the uh, great... Hooray for Hollywood. We, that's right. We le it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, and Adams got to the point where he said, All right, Rickles, enough's enough. Answer and do it right, otherwise I walk. <laughs> man was always yelling at me, but he just talked to me, and I fell down yeah. to this day. West Haven, Connecticut, for Don Rickles. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, yes, I saw you on your blooper show, and uh, really was wondering if you are going to be doing any movies or uh, TV shows in the future. And this is Albany, Georgia. So it's not West Haven, Connecticut? It's Albany, Georgia? Albany, Georgia. I'm sorry. Gee, I was down there years ago with a band called Bubbles Becker and his band, and we had a girl open the act that danced on a balloon, and I came out and called a guy a yo-yo, and he started to foam at the mouth. <laughs> uh, but I must say that uh, hopefully I will do, certainly do more television. In fact, I'm going to be on the Bob Hope special. I just did a little thing for George Burns. I did the George Burns uh, Comedy Week, which unfortunately was canceled, but I was on that and did a dramatic, uh, well, an acting part. And I love television, and hopefully I'll be doing quite a bit more. You worked in a movie with Clark Gable. <laughs> he worked with me. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Wow. Uh, yes, we did a picture called Run Silent, Run Deep, and Burt Lancaster kept coming over and said, does Clark like me? I said, go away, Burt. <laughs> How do I know if Clark likes you? Go away. <laughs> kept bothering me every day. He and you... Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas is another one. Every time I see, I'm going to have dinner with him, as a matter of fact, tomorrow night. The truth, not because I'm dropping names, because Kirk isn't that big a name. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I say, Kirk, how are you? He says, why, do I look bad? He's one of those guys, you know? And the face is starting to go. I give him about a week, tops. <laughs> he and Bert, they're all spitting up and wheezing. They don't know. They don't want to walk away. They don't want to make love to Ava Gardner when they were 21. Houston, Texas, hello. Hi, Don. Hi. 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 Hi, Don. Uh, calling from Houston, but I originally hailed from Jackson Heights, Queens. Remember that Yeah, area? that's where I'm from. Right, sure. Uh, my question is, um, uh, last year I saw you on Saturday Night Live, and I yeah. know you did a lot of ad-libbing, and uh, I mean, the show was fantastic. I was on the floor. Thank what you. What was that entire experience like? What was it like working with Piscopo and the gang? Well, working with Joe Piscopo, I must say, is quite an experience, and the whole entire uh, Saturday Night cast at that time. And the great thing was, a guy called Dick Ebersol said, as you uh, uh, said indirectly without knowing, uh, most of that was, was a set-up ad-lib kind of th situation. He had the sketches all written out, and he said, let Rickles do his thing, and you people respond to that. And I'm amazed at these people, because everything I said that had nothing to do with the sketch, they picked up on and made me look darn funny. And I was very proud of them, and I was kind of proud of the show myself. Was, thank you for is that a fun show to do? It's frightening, because they say live, you know, and two minutes before you're ready to go on, you know, live for live, like I'm doing this, you know. It's live. But no, nobody sees. But I mean, uh, <laughs> the shows that you see, you know, when you see Saturday Night Live and a guy says, live, you know, from New York, it's really live. I mean, you get out there and say something that, boom, that's not too, too tasty, that's it. You, what you say is, as they say, is what you get. We go to uh, Cold Strip, Montana. You're big there, Don. <laughs> Cold Strip. One of my favorites. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, you're on. Okay, I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Rickles that because when I was younger, I used to really be uncomfortable with his form of comedy, and now I'm older, I really enjoy it and think it's a riot. What changed, me, or did he, he stay the same? What makes his kind of comedy so funny to me these days? I guess you saw both our names going to the same home. <laughs> but I, I, I must say that uh, I've perfected my comedy. In the very beginnings, it was kind of rough, but like anything else, when you do something different, you have to take chances. To this day, I take chances uh, in, the, in my own mind. But uh, you have to be different, and you have to be creative. And when you're different and creative on the stage, you're open to a great deal of criticism. And if you it do works. something off the trail, it's, it's hard to have everybody love you. Sinatra was important for you, wasn't he? I mean, the fact that he really enjoyed you. I mean, you well, tear here's him a up typical example, Larry. Frank Sinatra, uh, you, you know, the inaugural for the President of the United States last year uh, in January, last January. I was invited to Washington. I was in Hawaii, and Frank called me. And it was only because of Frank Sinatra. I'm sure the president and Mrs. Reagan uh, naturally agreed. But Frank was the guy that put his best foot forward and said, I must have Rickles on the show, and nothing's to be written for him. He can walk out into a five-minute spot, and I trust what he will say and do, and let him do his thing and make fun of the cabinet and the government and what have you, and I guarantee it will come off okay. And I'm indebted for Frank for that. And it was a marvelous show and a great treat for me because I thought I would never get an opportunity to appear before the president. And then we went to the White House later, and uh, the president wanted to hang with me, but of course I was busy, <laughs> and I couldn't give him too much time. Did you get to meet Nancy? Yes, yeah, she came over, and uh, she said hello, and I said, not now, Nancy, I'm talking to some people. And uh, she walked away <laughs> with her little sherry glass, and that was the end of it. <laughs> Ronnie was great. He wanted me to go out in the back and see his horse back at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Jewish people don't have ranches. What do we know from horses? He kept doing this in the, when we were standing in the hall. I said, stop it, Ronnie. You don't need that. You know, just to show me he was a cowboy star. He's a nice guy, though. You know, Keeps leaning over and says, how do I look? Great. You look great. <laughs> you know what I said to him when we left the White House to help me go? What? I said, whenever you're in California, you hear Mr. President? And he leaned over and said, yeah. And all the Secret Service, you know, like this, they got that thing in their ear, they're going, well, what do you say, what do you say? He said, whenever you're in California, whatever you need, you give me a call, you understand? <laughs> he followed me out on the lawn. <laughs> what? I said, Ronnie, you heard me. And Sinatra was laying on the grass laughing, hoping I'd mention his name. <laughs> It was a long five days. You can't believe it. And I had some young kid that was a captain in the Navy. He was saluting me as the car door was closing on his hand. Boom, bang. I said, not now, Captain. He was driving the car, throwing his coat down for my wife. It was a whole thing. That's when I talked to George Bush, and I said, Mr. Vice President, it's nice meeting you. You want to see my tractor? Not now, George. Not now. Yonkers, New York. Hello. Donnie, baby. Nice tan. Nice, nice you, baby. Cool, sweetheart. How you 
you doing? Okay. <laughs> I want to wish everybody watching and you guys a very happy holiday. And I do want to ask, do you have anything lined up for a pay TV special so we could enjoy your humor in our living rooms as we are tonight? Yeah, why uh, don't you do a, a pay TV special? Well, I tell you, again, the formats, I mean... Uh, but I've you can get a lot looser on pay TV, can't you? Yeah, oh, sure. But uh, HBO has asked me to do a, a show doing my own performance uh, uh, that I do in a nightclub. And I don't feel at this point in my life I want to do that. And uh, any other format that they would come up with that would be uh, interesting to me and uh, by mutual consent, I would be more than happy to get that opportunity. But as, as of now, uh, nothing has crossed my path that, uh, you know, that would be kind of entertaining for me to do. To Phoenix, Arizona. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, this is Ellis Leibowitz of Phoenix, Arizona. How you Wait. doing? How you doing, Lee? How you doing? Ellis Leibowitz. Do you know this man, Don? There's no, but he sounds like we want to get in touch with each other. Don, big yeah. question. With all the experiences you've had in your private shows, have you ever had one where you felt you went a little too far and had some reverberations? Or You know what I'm saying. Yeah. What kind no. of ramifications of it? No. I'm, I, I'm I, listening to your answer. To be very I hope so, Mr. Lee Woods, or else why <laughs> yeah, ask the question? It would be murder if you hung up and let me talk to a wall. You won't hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lee Woods gives $300 anonymous and will listen to my response. Thank you, Mr. Lee Woods. Uh, <laughs> we'll now go on with the, with the Toma Torah prayers and continue on with the services. I want to say, if Larry will shut up and let me answer this man. To be very honest, Mr. Leibowitz, <laughs> starting to sound like a Jewish judge. I sentenced you to 35 years in prison. No, I want to say, Mr. Leibowitz, I really have never on the stage, anything I've ever done, I've never taken back in the sense that when I stand out there, you have to believe in what you do. If for one moment you say, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you're a fool. As an entertainer, this is in my own opinion and what I do. When I'm out there, I'm doing my best to make people laugh, and I'm doing with all earnesty. I'm not, a, 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 I'm, not a, I'm not out there to hurt somebody. If it comes off that way, I'm, I'm sorry in my heart, but I never take it back. In other words, I perform with my soul and with my honesty, and I think that's what makes me go. Omain! <laughs> beautiful, Don. That was a beautiful, beautiful... Thanks, Larry. I, I hope I touched you. There's a, there's a lot of tenderness in you that... Uh, People don't kidding? get to see. You're basically a, a bear, aren't you? Oh, you are. kidding. You should have heard the wife on the wedding night. Growled all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Just laid there growling. I had to set traps for her. It was murder. <laughs> <laughs> you, Larry, there's a hospital in Washington <laughs> that takes care of that special kind of cough. You understand, Larry? It's, you know where that's from, Larry? You don't wear a coat. <coughs> you go out in the... the <laughs> see, you start to spit up. That's Florida. That's all the asthma from Florida. And all that poison that you had in you in Florida, it's all coming out now. It's like, it's like those guys in the cafeteria, you know, on, on the farina. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm having such a good time talking to myself. I'm in a room with an earphone looking at a wall, and I'm laughing. This is the way you wind up in a sanitarium. <laughs> what a cheap show. They can't even get the host to show up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why do the show? Let's just sit here and laugh. <laughs> here we are at Disneyland. Come into my mouth and you're in the fun house. <laughs> Don, will you, will you stay an extra five minutes and then we'll... Oh, sure, you. if you beg. <laughs> Don Rickles, our guest, in a, little, in a couple of minutes we're going to meet... Uh... <laughs> Ah, shut up, Larry. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot host. <laughs> I just ended we'll, the career. We'll be back with uh, Don Rickles right after these words. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Are you bothering the people there in Los Angeles, Don? Are you, are you disturbing them? There's nobody you? here. There's one guy with a broom, and he keeps asking me, why am I sitting under a light? <laughs> nobody here. You make it like you have, a, you have a turnout. There's no turnout. That's a nice bureau there. Oh, uh, it sure is. That open hallway is great. There's <laughs> people just sitting there in their underwear, skiing. I don't know what they're doing. Worcester, Massachusetts, for Don... I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button, Don. What? what you don't care. Worcester, Massachusetts, hello. Hi, Don. Oh. 
Hi. Are you there? <laughs> yeah. Are you talking through a kazoo? Excuse me? <laughs> Nothing. I I'm just kidding. You. I was just kidding you, sweetheart. Just go right on. I, I want to know one thing. Are you this funny if you would come to my home as you are on TV and making people so happy? I just love you. You Thank are my you, most darling. favorite, favorite, favorite idol in the whole world. Thank you, darling. And you can be I'm sure I, I, I won't be at your home. <laughs> you won't be, or you will be. No, I'll be tied up. I, I won't be able to stop. But, but if I drive by, maybe you can wave out the window or something. I guess her, bless question, your heart be her question, Don, bless was, your heart be are you question, her question uh, was, are you funny off stage? Oh, are this you has, oh, this woman has an interpreter. Oh, <laughs> uh, am I funny off stage? Uh, well, uh, hey, if you have a death in the family, you're not laughing. I know. I mean, uh, no, I, I am uh, pretty much with my friends. Uh, it's according to what the situation is. If at home, sometimes I'm funny, but around the wife, I'm very humble because otherwise the shopping bill runs up. But uh, I must say, in all fairness, I'm pretty much uh, on an even keel when I'm around my family and friends. It's not joke, joke, joke all the time. Otherwise, you'd be uh, a little bit bananas. So I, I'm pretty much, when I'm away from the business and I'm not working, I pretty much relax. And there's not too much humor coming out of me all the time. Don, we have just a few minutes. Anything first of you all you'd like to say about Jamie Lee Curtis? She will follow you into that chair. She's a lovely actress, and I'm happy for her success. She's been doing some great films of late. And her father I knew very, very well. We, as I said to her off camera, we did a picture called Rat Race together. And if she has the talent her dad does, and she certainly is showing that, uh, she has a great career ahead of her, and I'm happy for her. Not, nothing else to say, huh? You just really Well, I just wanted to say to you, Larry, as a favor, please don't call me anymore. I think this was an absolute waste. This will not change my life one bit. I personally feel your show is not going to make it much longer, really. You're an annoying guy sitting there in your little funny little sweater every night, leaning over, pressing. You're like, you're like a beaver. You're trying to snarl and get information. Larry, go back to Miami and do what you do best. Suck up a swamp. Don't bother people, Larry. Don't bother people. Anything you'd yeah. like to say about, we have a minute, about what show business means to you. I know that you always show like Show business to... means a great deal of money for me. <laughs> Otherwise, I could go back to my old job selling insurance like my father did with a big debit book in Woodside, Long Island and collect $2. Show business is everything to me. I get up in the morning with Al Jolson's picture under my arm. <laughs> I drop my pajamas and pretend it's a curtain. I have so much fun by myself. It's a wonderful business. There's no business like show business. I like that. Let me write that down. Uh, sure, do that, Larry. <laughs> write everything down because with the lines you have, you're in a lot of trouble, Larry. Don, I thank you so much. I look forward I to seeing you. I thank you, Larry. And Atlantic I hope City. I see you in Atlantic City. Uh, the check is on me. Don't, Larry, there'll be no charge. Don't be nervous. It's a comp. <laughs> you, it's all comp, Larry. Don't ask. Do I have to tip the maid a D? Nothing. Just walk in with your sweater, sit down, and with that nose, you'll suck up the whole tablecloth. Thanks, Don. Happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas. Same to you, Don.